Hello, people of the internet. Today, I will be attempting to build a competitor to the Nissan 300ZX of 1990, as you'll see the year is set to that. Now, I do vaguely have a plan for where I want to go with this, as you'll see I've selected the 1985 coupe body. I feel it's the best body available to me that's for this purpose. We'll go with a unit reconstruction. Corrosion resistant steel, probably the best option, unless galvanised is any good for corrosion resistance, which I suspect it isn't, no. And we want it to co corrosion resist well, so I will. I think front longitudinal, although if things change and transverse all wheel drive becomes more effective, then I may very well go with that. Suspension type, a high end suspension type would be double wishbone and multi-link, but I think we want to keep prices down a little, and suspension's the way we can do that. Training arm is pretty good. I could do what I did with the economy vehicle, whatever it was called. Or I couldn't actually, that's only front wheel drive vehicles. <laughs> okay, if I were to go transverse, I could go with a torsion beam and give myself loads of boot space, but the reality of it is I don't really want a front transverse engine layout, nor do I want torsion beam suspension in what's supposed to be a sports car. I think semi-trailing arm rear and McPherson strut front seems like a pretty good combination, so that's what I'm going to use. And the panel material. I'll use corrosion resistant steel. Again, just a good all-round material for the time period. It resists corrosion and holds up over time quite well. So, moving on. We need a wider body because clearly this isn't quite fitting the wheels in that I want. It's not fitting the defaults in. How would it fit wider, sportier tyres? I think we need a new colour though. If we go in this weird gold colour, modify that. Hopefully I can work this out. Ooh, look at that. Very nice greeny blue we've got here. Darken that, perhaps. Lovely. Very nice colour there. It does still look somewhat like a Nissan Silvia, though. And I'm not sure that fixes it. I think if I flatten that down, maybe this will be onto something I don't know though. Just trying to stretch for bodywork into a position I like, really. So it's going to be front engine rear drive. Maybe we should stretch out the tail a bit. Move the cab as backwards as we possibly can. As that will pressure weight rearwards, hopefully. And we should be able to save this colour. Kind of a greeny colour though. I'd like more blue in it, actually. There we go. Kind of walks the line between green and blue now. So, we can go off there. And... Wheels, do we change them now? No, we just paint them. We could go with chrome wheels. I don't think we really want chrome though, I think. Try steel for now. See how that goes. And perhaps with a window trim. I believe I did this with the wet trim with Bob. I put steel around the windows because it just looks white. It's not too sparkly, it just fits. In this particular car, it doesn't look like it fits, though. Unless I'm missing something blatantly obvious. Which I don't think I am, sadly. So that'll have to go. We could replace it with carbon fibre, perhaps. Although I still don't think that's really mass-producible in the early 90s. Let's just paint it black. That's something. But we'll paint the mirrors again. Paint those body colour. Looks slightly nicer, I think, like that. And we can go with a crazy design. Ooh, look at this. This doesn't actually look as bad as I would have expected. It's not to say it's a pretty car. It's just less horrible than I might have expected it to look. Come on, I want them to move outwards. 
There we go. <laughs> Looks like most modern vehicles. It looks, I don't know how to say it, it looks kind of angry. It's angry, it's not prettier. That's what it is. I don't know though, how can I position them just right? It, it looks like it wants to be an Aston Martin at the moment. Hey, we can just say they stole our design, so it's not the end of the world. We could have a badge as well. Where are you? Badges. That can just fit right there, like so. On the bonnet. Or just in front of the bonnet, actually. And we need a nice grill to finish off the design. Yes, just make it a huge tuna grill. This is not my prettiest work yet. It's not my prettiest work yet. It's definitely angry though. Make of that what you will. The angry vehicle, the most angriest vehicle ever. And where are the indicators? There we go. It wants to take over the world. It's so angry. You know what? We could have a fuel filler cap on here. <laughs> that just doesn't work at all in any way. Put a number plate on. Perhaps people won't notice it's so ugly. Well, I've put a functional design together, I feel. Even though it isn't pretty, it at least works. In that you've got a grill, you've got your indicators, and you've got your headlights. Tail lights, where are you? We could have some of these. I mean, this is a hideous thing for what's supposed to be a coupe. I'll probably come back and entirely fix the vehicle. But for the time being, I'm just getting it completed, really. We can mirror that on the other side. It hasn't taken as long as it could. That's the definite positive with messing up a design like I have. The wear actually doesn't look half bad. It looks very generic, but besides that, it's not a bad design as such. Just if only you could have nicer tail lights, because those do not look good. Two aftermarket. And can we get door handles? There we go. Put some of these on. They're the wrong way round. We need to flip them round. There we go. That, I think, is more or less a completed vehicle. Fuel filler cap. Can't forget that, though. Let's have a rectangular one. Let's keep it odd and weird. Maybe move that onto the tail. So there we go. You can fill up in style with a square fuel filler cap. <laughs> People's standards are very low now. I was thinking though, we could have two engine variants. We could have an inline four and an inline six and a turbo version of both of them. Both would be single overhead cam, full aluminium blocks. The Nissan has a V6, but it is dual overhead cam and a cast iron block. So I'm thinking we save a bit of money on the head type have a simple head type that's cheaper to manufacture, but then spend that money on the aluminium, which I think should be better for overall performance. If we go around here, what do we have? Inline six. Yes, as I was saying. So we could go with two litres of each. I'm thinking what we'll have though is about 2.2 litres of inline four, or something along those lines. So it would look something like that. And the inline six would be 50% bigger than that due to its cylinders. So that would be a 3.1, would it? I'm trying to think. Or did I say 2.2? 2.4 for the inline four then. A massive inline four, but nonetheless it should do the job. 
For the inline 6, we can have a 3.6. There we go. We finally worked out my engine dimensions. Still slightly messed up for dimensions, but we have got the basic size there. And I'll stick some high-end stuff here, but I'll probably change it later. If the engine needs it, that is. Or if it doesn't need it, dependent on that really. Variable valve timing, we'll go with that. And as I said, we're going to have a turbo variant of each. I think we'll start with a turbo because it's the more exciting option of all the engines, a turbo in line six. Start with a huge intercooler. Make sure we have plenty of one over, so if we want to stick a massive turbo on, we can. Go with performance as a basis for what we're going to build here. And I'll try single point injection with a performance intake. It may want multi-point. I'll have to just see how it goes. If I'm already making loads of power with single point injection, I can't justify throwing crazy amounts of technology at it. And wow, look at this engine. I think it looks more complex than it is though. It's actually fairly simple when you compare it to some turbocharged V6s around. Plus it's a single turbo unlike the Nissan, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because Normally, if you have a good enough engine, the lag won't be a problem. We also have 600cc's larger displacement than the Nissan to play with, so this should really be an easy engine build if ever I saw one. We can go with a single reverse flow muffler, hopefully, for the time being, and try and adjust the exhaust dimensions. There we go. So... There we go. The um, adjustments, they need to be made. Just thinking of that. 126. Uh, there's the power. Look at this. I'm not even trying and the power's just flying out of it. I will want to reduce the lag though. The lag isn't perfect as it is. And it makes the power drop off far too soon. I'd want that to be later as well. But still, for a start, this is not bad at all. So I'll just let you hear the engine quickly. There we go. The engine fails if I try and rev it too high, but... That is the basic point of it. If we can look under here, we'll hopefully see it. No, it's not showing our engine yet. Will it show it when I press weird drive? There we go. Uh, suspension bits. I think we made quite a nice sports car already and I've not even finished it yet. We'll see the engine seems to fit in no problem at all. We're just under the badge now. We seem to be in the radiator. Radiator seems to be crammed just behind the grill, but other than that, there seems to be no problem fitting it in whatsoever. Can we can we see from underneath? I oddly can't see the radiator. Hmm. Maybe it's not displaying it or something weird. Not the smallest engine, but we have no problems. If we go with a manual transmission, I think we want a five-speed manual. Pretty standard stuff for the time. Go with a vicious limited slip differential for the time being because it's cheap. And yeah, the engine's failing all over the place. That can wait. Just want to get this thing together. I think we'll go with medium compound. 245s. 255s front. We don't want wider front tyres. So hopefully we can raise the wear out a little. Oh, so two... 245, 265, maybe. Sounds pretty good to me. We'll have to see how this stuff works out. I can't guarantee it'll work out perfectly. I think we'll go with some alloy wheels. And we go with maybe vented discs. I'm not sure. Do we want solid discs? Solid discs have been on production cars since the 1970s, so I think we can get away with vented discs. Not four pistons though, one piston vented discs, and we can make them pretty large actually, 300mm vented discs. 
I don't want them that large. How are you supposed to get them out for servicing? I guess you could put bigger wheels on. I'll probably do that now I mention it. 18 inch wheels, maybe. Although, when we're looking at 1990, they do affect how wide tyres you can put on the car, sadly. So, we'll look at that. It leaps down. There's a point. So, maybe 16 inches when we can put wider tyres on. Oh, this is very, very awkward, actually. More awkward than I would have expected. So, 15 inches is what it defaults to. And it looks like what we'll be keeping, because beyond then, the tyres just don't get as wide. And I don't really need any more width than that, so no massive need to make them smaller. Yeah, it's a shame, but that's just the technology in tyres, really. So, moving on. We won't have drums on the way, we'll have one piston solid... Well, one piston, uh, yeah, solid discs at... 235 millimeters sounds good in the grand scheme of things so all in all we've got that sorted fully clad under tray for superior aerodynamics and do we need more than two seats it's interesting because if we're looking at the nissan there were two seater variants and there were two plus two variants I'm going to put two seats in for now, just to get the basic balancing done. And then I'll probably change it to four later, because as I say, the Nissan was a two plus two in certain cases. So, we can always use that as a benchmark, I guess. Premium interior, with a standard cassette. How many features can you actually need on a cassette player, let's be honest. We'll go with... Hydraulic power steering, no traction aids because I don't think they're necessary, especially not if your car's set up properly, and standard safety, maybe? No, keep it advanced. The Nissan probably had something advanced on its side. Ooh, hydro pneumatic suspension, how can I resist? If we set off a comfort though, yeah, we don't want that. So I'll have low slung hydro pneumatic suspension, hopefully for a good balance between wide comfort and sportiness. Now if we look at the test track, we have 1298 kilograms weight. The balance is pretty terrible. I don't know how it's pretty terrible because I put aluminium technologies into this engine. 215.9 kilograms. Yeah, I just, I'm lost to think of why it's that poorly balanced. Sure, it could be better balanced, but it shouldn't be this bad, surely. Could lower that, see if that makes any difference. I think it made a small difference, but a very, very small one. Either way, I built a hypercar on this platform and it was poorly balanced, so I think it's just one of the things we have to put up with. Although I could go with all-wheel drive, I still wouldn't deem it necessary. If we go with different suspension, nah, let's not bother with that. I'll just mess something up. So what I've got to do now is I've got to do some finishing touches, take it around the test track, and then return when I'm done with my changes. So, here we have the finished vehicle. It's been through quite a few changes, actually. More than I initially thought it would end up going through. And you'll see it looks vaguely like a Ferrari 458 kit car. Yeah, it's not a horrible design, though. I basically messed with a front bumper in order to give it a more sloped, more angular look. Or is it? Is sloped angular an opposite? I guess that's an oxymoron, sloped angular look. The tail is more or less the same, maybe slightly longer. And we've got little triple exhaust things. That's because, as you'll see later, the exhaust system is huge. It's got a huge exhaust pipe, so... You'd want to separate it out in a way that looks re reasonably okay. we gonna ble yes. One of we gonna proves. Anyway, there are taillights. I, I just couldn't find anything else that really worked with the design. As horrible as they are, there's no best alternatives available, sadly. I've also added some trim around the edges. And 
some indicators here, indicators down here. I think they might have been there as different indicators already. And a smaller, less pretentious grill. The badge has also been moved down. So, all in all, I think it's a better looking car. It's not perfect, but I'm happy enough with it for the time being. We'll see you got loads of front weight balance. There's not much I could do about that. It's less than unmanageable, though, I think. I could stick double wishbones on the back or something, but I really don't think I need to. And I guess it's just a way of increasing complexity and cost when it's not necessary to put down 300 horsepower. 500 maybe, not 300. And if we look here, we'll see we are under $20,000. We can't make much more profit there, though, and keep it under 20000 but... We can keep it in that price range, and given the Nissan was supposedly $30,000, we have done well in that respect. Everything for quality is on plus one, unless I've missed something out, which I didn't there. No, I thought I did for a moment. But everything is plus one, unless I missed something out. I did some airflow optimization, and the brakes now, pretty technological, but they still fit within the $20,000 price range so I'm happy with them. Mars per gallon as you'll notice is actually incredible. 22.3 I would never have expected me to be able to build an engine like this but I did and that's a, that's a surprise. Not that it can be done but the fact that I managed to do it. We're looking at a top speed of 162.1 miles per hour. Not bad at all. And if we look back to the power well, see if the engine isn't too bad. The power stops at 5,900 RPM. I would like to have it higher, but there is advantages to this, such as we can run cast iron pistons and conrods and crankshaft. Although I made the aluminium block, these bits didn't make near as much difference as the block normally does. So if we look at, say, the crankshaft, probably the heaviest of all three bits, we can go on that and it adds... Or it saves a few kilos, four to five kilos, I would say. And if we look at here, yeah, we'll see we're easily putting 20 kilograms on with the block. So that's why I've gone with this way of doing things, as well as the fact that I set up the block in such a way with the bore and stroke that I can get away with them. It's a less advanced technology, so it should be far easier to manufacture than all this fancy stuff we've got down here. So, although it's a surprise, it's a positive surprise, that's for sure. And you can quite easily change this stuff and keep the aluminium block if you really want to turn it into an ultra-high-performance engine, like I guess you would with a super engine. The quality again on plus one. I wanted to make it a good quality car, but not enough so you couldn't mass produce it anymore. And compression is very low. Cam profile is actually 50. I'm surprised it's set there. I didn't really look at it. And I can mess with it, but I want the power to be made late. Gives me max usable range, I think, if we have. The power comes on at 2400. That's good. My engines normally... Yes, I got there eventually. My engines normally lag at 4,000 RPM. So, I've done well to make the power that early. And I, believe me, I know this engine could make a lot more power if I wanted it to. But I weren't going for that. I was going for an overall usable powertrain. So, hence why we've got power coming on at 2,400 and ending at 5,900. It also gives us all the cast iron usability positives because we don't need ultra high-end stuff so that's all in all quite good i've gone with my point injection and oddly single configuration seem to be better it's either better or there's next to no change so i just use single really does it say if there's a weight difference it is heavier single slightly material cost is a bit higher so there's not much difference it's more a point injection that's the important thing i think this looks better just i know it's a personal thing but i think single just looks a bit more aggressive a bit more sporty what does it say about the engine size actually i didn't look into it it claims i've got loads of height to spare now that is the one thing i would disagree with about the engine because you'll see there there isn't a lot of height to spare with height is 
I think height is the one thing that isn't loads to spare of on the engine. But I'll go back to the engine now. There is also standard exhaust system. As I said, there was a massive exhaust on here. And it tops out at 6400 RPM. For an engine I build, this is unusually American. My engines usually rev higher than this. And it does remind me of a GMC Cyclone engine in many ways. Although, despite being a larger engine, it is actually less torquey and more powerful. So, that's just the way I tune my engines. Torque I don't really care about. I just got lucky with this in that it got huge amounts of torque. I'll let it run now and shut up for a moment. So that was another interesting thing about this engine. As I was saying, it's a very American power curve in that it's got loads of grunt. But it's a very German sound, I think, very BMW style sound. You wouldn't expect all this to happen in one engine, but it has. It's really a combination of different elements from different cars. And I'm just thinking that I've messed up slightly yes that wheel isn't quite out as much as it is i'd like to actually spread that wheel out so if we go to this menu we can go to rim offset can't make it wider just the nature of the 17 inch wheels i'm currently using which allow me to fit bigger brakes but they do make the wheels narrower as a result we can bring that out make it look much more natural and i'm hoping make it perform better as well if we have the wider track, we can do the same with a the front. There we go. And I've messed something up on the bodywork. Oh dear. Still, that should be more or less complete. There is just the final tuning I can do. 5.6 seconds 0 to 60. It's slightly slower than the Cyclone, but not by much. By 0.1 of a second. It's apparently still 1.9 seconds quicker than the Nissan, so we're easily in the free there. And if we compare it to the uh, Mazda RX-7 from 1992, that's apparently a 4.4. We're never going to compete with that, it's 1.2 seconds quicker, so I'll just put up with it. The better miles per gallon does hurt the acceleration, but it's not hurt to the point I'm really angry about it. The best I saw was 5.2, so I've lost maybe 0.4 of a second acceleration. It's not the end of the world. I just need to tune the suspension now for sport again, and I should be able to take this around the track, and if anything is seriously different with the time, I'll tell you, and now it's a very sad car. Yeah, it's not really happy as it was. Okay, so we've finished the lap now. Again, and it's at a slightly slower time, but it's by less than 0 0.01 seconds, so not really worthy of conversation. Anyway, if we look at the times, which are somewhere here, we'll see it's between the Boaty McHatchback and the non-turbo coupe, which was a Fiat coupe rival I built. Not too bad. But I, I would have honestly expected better, but it is a GT car, ultimately. Why are you so sad? I don't know. I've got to fix this look. It's just so annoying. Come on. Have we just flipped round? It looks like the lights have just flipped round. No idea how that would have happened. And... The Weirs have done the same thing. Anyway, there we go. Car is fixed. It shouldn't be troubling us again. Still, that's our vehicle. So, what else have we come around? We've come below the prison van for kids and the wet me Bob V8 by a few seconds. That's not too bad. 
We beat the board fox speed. That's the important thing. You can't have a, a car this high end and have it beaten by the fox speed. But anyway, I'm going to leave it here for today and say goodbye until another day.